trap game? Maybe. Cowboys a now six-point favorite at home against a Saints team coming off one of the most dominant wins in Week 1, although Dallas not that far behind given the level of competition. Cowboys at home for the first time all year, given it's not that far of a drive. Might see plenty of Saints fans, or at least some Saints fans, in attendance. Who we got in this one? C for the Cowboys, S for the Saints. Let me know in the comments of today's video. C or S, I'd like to see one hell of a lot of C's in the comments. All right, the Cowboys injury report here. Jake Ferguson, again, we're filming this, by the way, on Thursday. Going to go out Saturday, so should have a better feel overall for what's probably going to happen. But Ferguson's knee, I didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. I have my doubts there. Marshawn Neeland has a calf injury. I have some real concerns on that one. I guess they had real concerns. He went from DNP to limited on Wednesday to Thursday. I do think that bodes super well for him. So fingers crossed there. Not too worried about TJ Goodwin. Two straight days of being limited. And then John Stevens Jr. has a hamstring. He did not practice the first two days of the week. That does not bode very well for him. The Saints, meanwhile... DeMarco Jackson uh, has a calf injury that seems likely to, to not allow him to be able to go. He's banged up. Uh, Jalen Ford has, has been a little bit nicked up as well. A fellow linebacker, limited back-to-back -back, um, back participations. Marshawn Lattimore didn't go Wednesday or Thursday. His status, very much in doubt. Tyron Matthew upgraded to limited uh, with his heel injury, so that bodes well for him. Foster Moreau was limited to full after a concussion. He should be good to go, barring a setback. Lucas Patrick went from DNP to limited, but Taliese Fuaga went from limited to DNP with a back. So a huge concern there on the number one corner, Marshawn Lattimore, and the offensive tackle, uh, Taliese Fuaga, the team's first-round pick. It'd be Ali Odu at tackle if he can't go, and that's not a great sign. Uh, Kalen Saunders, by the way, also did not participate with a with a calf. So as of Thursday, two pretty big giant question marks there on Lattimore and Fuaga for the Saints. So with that in mind, what is your confidence level in the Dallas Cowboys beating the Saints? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. Let's hit some matchups to watch. Number 1 is Mike Zimmer against Clint Kubiak. There are some very fun elements involved here. A, Mike Zimmer knows Clint Kubiak very well. They were on staff together with the Minnesota Vikings. In fact, Zimmer's last year in Minnesota, Kubiak was his offensive coordinator. He knows a ton about what things he wants to run there. Now, two main areas I want to focus on. You'll see more, more I think, commitment to the run out of New Orleans. They'll, they'll try to establish that. That's the offensive style. You'll see a lot more motion, too. Browns barely used it. Saints used it at a top 10 clip in week one. The blitz rates from week one. The Panthers against the Saints blitzed more than any team in football. 44% of the time they blitzed. The Cowboys were 20th at 23.5%. Despite that, the pressure rate allowed, the Saints were 30th at a 20% pressure rate on dropbacks. It's like four or five times. That's it. The Browns, Meanwhile, had the fourth highest. So what does that mean? The Panthers brought pressure every chance they could, and they could not get home. The Cowboys didn't bring that much pressure, and they got home constantly. So two different tails of the tape right there. Also, this is a Shanahan-based offense. Kubiak, right? There's some heavy overlap there. He, he was in San Francisco before this, uh, in between his Vikings and now Saints stint. Mike Zimmer... Part of the reason why there was optimism around this hire was what he's able to do in coverage against the Shanahan coaching tree. Great stat from the uh, now retired on, or not great graphic, I should say, from the now departed uh, on social media, at least, at Cowboy Stats and Graphics. Gone but not forgotten. He's alive. He just retired from Twitter. Uh, Mike Zimmer, one of the best at stopping the Shanahan tree through the air. Dan Quinn, one of the worst of the notable defense coordinators. That this this is a trial run. It's a beta test because it's a different animal than the Niners' offense. Of a big reason why you hired Mike Zimmer, or at least one of the biggest confidence reasons. He he can get us better against the offenses that have killed us. 
He can help save us. Because Green Bay, to an extent, is a little bit, a little bit of, an, of an offshoot of that. Not quite the same, but there's enough Lafleur shanahan overlap stuff that I think it's worth mentioning there. And there was technically the same tree, too. It's not quite as obvious as, like, you know, McVay and Shanahan, right? So, Mike Zimmer, this, this is a big, big showcase game for you. All right, matchup to watch number two, Cam Jordan against Terrence Steele. Remember the Cowboys moved uh, Micah Parsons around a lot? The Saints don't do that on defense. Uh, Chase Young was over the left tackle, and Cam Jordan was over the, the right tackle. And that did not change at all, really. Um, so it's going to be a tough test for Terrence Steele. I thought he played pretty damn well against the Browns. Now, the Cowboys actively tried to make life easier on their offensive line. It was a lot of quick game. They moved the pocket a lot. They tried to limit a ton of one-on-one -on -one reps for a potent Browns defense. The one sack allowed, he also looked much better as a run blocker. I need more of that in week two. So I am optimistic with what I saw out of Terrence Steele. Still need more. Still need more. Today's show is made possible by Game Time. Speaking of more, they're always adding stuff to help you save money on tickets. The, the latest feature, it's called Game Time Picks. It filters out the fluff to only show you incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. It makes getting tickets to your favorite team play live even easier. They've also got views from your seats. So you can kind of take your phone, move it around, kind of like a live photo, and you see what your view actually is. Remember the meme of the one guy who was stuck behind the wall? He didn't use game time because he would have known. He would have seen it on his uh, game time app. So download the game time app, create your account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. But again, create your account. Redeem code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, CHATSPORTS, for $20 off. Download game time today because what time is it? It's game time. Trigger warning. The underthrown pass against Cowboys defensive backs. Uh, I will never mentally recover from that 2021 Thanksgiving game. You remember that game, right? Cowboys, Raiders, Cowboys fall behind. They come back. They go to overtime. They lose. The singular biggest reason why the Cowboys lost that game, five different times they got off the field on third down only to have it come back because of penalties. They had 96 penalty yards on third downs. Under, and it was a barrage of underthrown passes from Derek Carr that were such bad throws the receiver had to try to stop and come back to the football. So it's the classic BS underthrown pass versus DPI. I will have a bout of PTSD if I, if I see it happen again. Get your head around. Easier said than done when you're playing from behind. But that game lives rent-free in my mind because it was a bunch of crap. All right, number four is the Mike McCarthy offense against Dennis Allen. This is part of your little stretch. A lot of good defenses in a row. And I don't think Dennis Allen is a particularly great head coach. He is a very good defensive mind, however. So I worry a little bit uh, about that matchup. I think it's going to be a bit of a tricky one for the Cowboys offense. Who is your better head? Who is the better head coach? MM for Mike McCarthy, DA for Dennis Allen. Let me know right now. Number five is what I, I call it the defensive spine against the Saints. And that kind of, it's just, it's the middle of your defense, right? It's, hey, how are your defensive tackles? How are your linebackers? How are your safeties? And I think for what Mike Zimmer wants to do, you can even mix in Jordan Lewis, who we'll come back to here more in depth in a little bit. Against a team that I, I think is probably just bad in Carolina, who had just nothing going on defense. It's going to be a bad defense this year. Saints were third in yards on the ground. 7th in EPA per carry, ninth in success rate, 5th in explosives, and one thing that gives me some hope here, they were only 18th in yards before contact. They were ninth after contact. I thought the Cowboys tackled pretty friggin' well in, in Week 1. And if you do that again with your linebackers, Overshone, Kendricks, Jordan Lewis, I think that you can have much more success stopping the run against the Saints than Carolina did. I want you guys to get your score predictions in between the Cowboys and the Saints. Let me know in the comments right now. 
Let's talk players to watch. Number five is Tyler Guyton. And, you know, the, the Cowboys tried to hide him, which they should have. The coverage stuff, or the, the pressure's allowed to look good. One sack, one hurry. Yeah, I don't, I didn't love what I saw going back and rewatching with, with, with the better angles on Tyler Guyton. Not that he was terrible. Um, I don't think he was bad, but I, I think some, some of his bad habits came through. And you saw that Fox did a good job showing it one time live. His mistake, his main mistake, he, he lowers, he, he drops that head and he headbutts you. And it gets him out of position. And against top tier pass rushers, that's, that's going to be a more pronounced issue. So I think the, the floor is fine. You know, if you get that every week, hopefully some better run blocking. Um, I, I, I think you'll be okay there. But I, it, it is not a, it, he is not a put him on an island and forget him guy. Uh, Tyron Smith was that. Um, and I, I don't think Guyton's there yet. And then that's okay. He's probably not supposed to be there yet. So it, it's probably the toughest test he's going to face all year. Uh, TJ Watt will probably get more reps against Terrence Steele, which terrifies me too. Uh, but so no, no, no to go but up. Uh, he, he survived. And that was the goal in, in week one. Week two, let's be a bit better. Now, we will be live for our Cowboys vs. Saints watch party. So hit that sub button if you haven't already. It's youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. I want to watch Jordan Lewis in this game. That is the cornerback. Uh, remember the last time he played against these Saints? When he shut down Alvin, Alvin Kamara? I kind of feel like the last like five or so games, you've seen that Jordan Lewis a few times. He was great against the Browns. You know, you can go four of five every week and allow 14 yards and no first downs. That, that That's awesome. He, he was physical against the run for an undersized guy. I was very impressed with what I got out of Jordan Lewis, and I'm going to need that again against a Sace offense that will get the ball to Taysom Hill, will get the ball to the tight ends, and will take some deep shots with Rashid Shahid, and we'll get uh, Alvin Kamara involved too. Number three, Brandon Cooks. That is the uh, wide receiver who, if assuming Fergie can't go, probably means some more targets for Cooks. I'd like to keep getting him involved. Now, I don't want to take away stuff from Lamb, but I promise you we're not going to do Micah Parsons, Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb every week. None of those guys are on this list today. I, I, was, I was a man of my word, just like with the toaster. Um, four catches, 40 yards, and a score. I liked what I saw from Cooks. I want to see more of it. I want to, I want to get him more involved. I want, I want some big plays, too. He's fast. Can I get some explosives with him? I think that's the next element to your offense to truly unlock it beyond the ground game. Now, who scores the first touchdown for the Dallas Cowboys? Cooks was it last week. Who is it this week? Let me know in the comments. We kind of mentioned, you know, the spinier defense against the Saints, their ground game all week long. That means DeMarvion Overshone steps up again. I thought he was awesome. I thought Eric Kendricks was great. Damone Clark was solid too. Overshone was very impressive against the Browns. He had 11 tackles on 44 snaps, which is just insane. Um, that's an immensely high ratio. His speed was on full display. I think he got faster from his time in Texas, by the way. And he added some weight too, so... The I don't think you, you kind of saw remember that that first year with Micah Parsons, uh, I think teams were surprised how like quarterbacks were surprised how fast he was. I think you're going to see some of that for Demarvin Overshone too. Number one player to watch this week how about Ezekiel Elliott. I assume he's going to start again at in, in the backfield. We'll probably split time with Rico Dowdle, and I could have gone with both of these guys, but I'll probably space them out over the, the weeks. But for now, he's your RB one A. I thought Elliott was fine in week one. Um, relative to expectations, you know, I, 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 don't, I, I really don't think we should be, as, as fandom, you know, victor, victory lapping, Zeke's as good as he ever was after 10 carries, 40 yards. Like, that's not, that's not what he was at his best. But for what he is now, I'm pretty much fine with that. Now, I, I was a little bit surprised to go back and look, and look at some of the advanced stats. It, it makes sense the more I think about it. And have him be so low. These are NFL pros, next-gen stats. Running backs, well, I, I, I took out the quarterbacks. Uh, significantly bad rush yards over uh, expected per attempt. And I think the big reason there, it was much better to begin the game. You know, Zeke's last few carries were like two yards, three yards, two yards, three yards. That, that was late in the game when your offense was bad. 
So I'm not surprised it was that low. There were no explosive plays on the ground from Elliott. He only made like one or two guys miss and break a tackle. So he got what was blocked, but didn't always get more than that. And it is expected to get a little bit more than that. Now, his EPA was high because he had the touchdown run, which is a nice six-yard touchdown run that really helps your EPA, and didn't go backwards ever. And that's always one of the big things with Elliott. The thing I've always liked most about him, especially in, in his re recent years, if you need a yard and it's blocked for negative one, if it's bad blocking, he going to get you one. Now, he not going to get you 25 if it's blocked for five or 10, but expectations matter there. The success rate was also pretty low. He didn't get that many short yardage stuff, which is why that number was lower. He also faced a pretty light stack box number, and part of that was the formation. They, they ran a lot of shotgun runs. They did better in shotgun runs because it's lighter boxes, and you can have more success up front. And I want to see a little bit more yards after contact. 2.5. He's kind of like, he's like always good for at least one or two on every carry. Like Zeke is not a player who goes sideways when you hit him. He always falls forward. But I'd like to find some explosives. Does that come from Zeke? Does that come from Dowdle? Do you give Deuce Vaughn a chance? I, I still, I, I think you have a, a fine floor. I do think your ceiling right now until we see otherwise remains a bit limited in this backfield.